Okay, thanks everyone. Um, so, hi, I'm Al Thompson from Oroso Victoria, and I've agreed to facilitate this uh, sort of Q&A session about doing a proposal for next year's Oral History Australia Biennial Conference, which is in Melbourne in November. Um, so I'm going to do about a five to 10 minutes presentation with some slides to show people a number of things, and then we'll have a chance for Q&A at the end. And as Alice said, this is being recorded, although not the Q&A at the end, uh, so that hopefully people will be able to see it after today. So the basic details you can see there, um, and it's in Melbourne, it's face-to-face, -face, so it's not an online conference, uh, as it was in Tasmania. I think we all feel like this is an event only to every two years. It's really good to meet face-to-face. -face. The keynotes will probably be recorded, but apart from that, it'll be entirely face-to-face. -face. Uh, it's over four days, with the first day being a number of training workshops and then a welcome event, Friday and Saturday for the conference. And on Sunday, there'll be guided tours. Um, so that's that's the basics. Now, if you want to put in a proposal, and we really encourage people to do so, we use the same system that we used for the last, well, last several conferences, which is the Easy Chair system. And basically, uh, you can see on the right there, the quick link section on the conference page. All you do is you go to that, you click on Submissions Easy Chair Portal, and then you'll get a, a login uh, that looks like the thing at the bottom there. If you've already got an Easy Chair account, uh, you just log in. Uh, if you haven't, then all you have to do is click create an account and it takes about two minutes to create an account and then that'll be your account. Remember your password, although you can always find it uh, if you lose it. Uh, that'll be your account for for checking your, for, for putting your proposal in and then checking on it down the track. Okay. And I should say, if anyone wants to stop me and ask any questions as I go, please do, uh, or else you can hold them till later if you want. Or you could put questions in the chat and possibly Alice and other committee members could check the chat while I'm talking. Okay, so you've done that. Uh, once you then uh, have got your account and log in, this is what you'll see, uh, the Easy Chair site for the conference. And you'll see there is a make a new submission. You just click on make a new submission, but also you can see, you can see there there's a link to the call for papers, the conference website in case you need to refer back to them. So you click on make a new submission and this is what comes up basically. Um, it's pretty simple. Basically you put in your author details, who you are basically. Uh, there are three boxes, so it could be three of you presenting together. And in fact, if there's more than three, there's even a, a way of adding additional authors. Okay. The little corresponding author thing at the bottom there is important. If you click that, uh, you can click it for any of the contributors. Uh, that's the person who will then get correspondence automatically through the system. So do make sure that's clicked. And then the next, on, you just scroll down and the next thing you have to do is your title and your abstract. And I'll come back and talk about those in a moment. And then keywords. Okay. Um, and I'm going to come back and talk about that in a moment. Uh, this little bit here, Kirby Fenwick, who's running the Easy Chair process for Oral History Victoria for this conference, um, is just going to tweak this. This is an Easy Chair sort of standard thing about uploading your paper. We're not uploading papers. You're just putting your abstract in. Uh, there's a box above, as you saw, but you can also add it as a file if you want. Uh, hoping Kirby might be able to remove or just clarify that that's not about uploading your paper. Uh, at no stage will we, will we be asking you to submit your paper to the conference. Um, uh, I'll come back and talk about where you might want to submit it later. And then when you've done that, and that's only going to take you a few minutes, particularly if you've uh, uh, written up your abstract outside the system and then just bring it in. And then you just click submit and that's it, basically. So that's the easy chair system. Uh, very straightforward, but let me talk through what I think might help you when you're doing it. Uh, if you, firstly, if you've got any uh, problems on the call for presentation site, there's a set of instructions for using Easy Chair. Uh, you can also email this the conference email address, which Kirby will get, and she can respond with any questions if you're struggling with Easy Chair. There's a very bit of small print which says if you really, really, really can't use the system, you can email it as a PDF uh, to that email address. Um, but it's nice having them all in the system because when we come to review them and, you know, we may have between 100 and 200 proposals, it makes life a lot easier when they're all in one place. So uh, let me just say a little bit about presentations and firstly about formats. We are really keen on getting presentation proposals in a number of different formats and media. 
Uh, and the, the 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 types of format that you might want to consider is the standard one, which is a, a single person presentation. I say typically 20 minutes because that's what it often is. If we have a lot of really good proposals and we have to squeeze them into two days, uh, then we might say to people, you've got 15 minutes just to include as many people as possible. So that's why we haven't actually said exactly how long that'll be. If you just want to talk about work in progress and not give a, if you like, a, a, a paper, then we've got what, what are called lightning accounts, which are going to be sessions with short five minute presentations where you can just describe work in progress. OK, so that's uh, you can put in one of those. We're also interested in people proposing participatory workshops. This is not for the Thursday before the conference, not training workshops, but a workshop that you might want to run on something practical, for example. Uh, if you want to do an oral history performance, uh, that's another option, or a thematic panel. So if you've got a group of a few of you who together want to do a panel, you can put that in and you can uh, put it in as a single proposal and then put your three names in there. Okay. Whereas you can contact Kirby through the conference email address for any questions about Easy Chair and submit, submission, I'm, um, as I was last time, I'm chairing the conference program committee, which is going to include reps from both Oral History Victoria and each of the other state and territory associations. And that's the committee that will review the proposals next year. Um, so I'm very happy if you've got any questions and people have already begun to email me, just email me uh, and I'm happy to talk with you about the format or the focus of your presentation if you want to talk about it before you submit it. Keywords. Um, basically, it asks you to put in a few keywords. Now, one suggestion I've got is have a look at the conference sub-themes, which are on the website and listed there. Um, if you think, and hopefully your presentation will link to at least one of those, and maybe a couple of those, you could just use that sub-theme. That'll help us when we're putting together the program, because we'll see uh, a number of different presentations on the same theme. But as well as that, you could also add one or two other keywords just to give us an idea uh, you know what sort of keywords so really just think about is it about uh, local history is it about museums and oral history whatever okay um, and as it says just put each one on a separate line but the instructions are on the site so that's keywords but the most important thing and this is the thing that when we're reviewing the proposals we look at really closely is your title and your abstract title really all you want to do is make sure it's really clear from the title what you're going to be talking about what you're going to be doing you know and it might be in two parts with a colon in between but make it simple but make it really clear uh, what it is you're going to be talking about and what you're going to get out of if you come along to this session because bear in mind the title is going to be what's on the program uh, so people are going to be making decisions yes they may go through the book of abstracts online but probably a lot of people decide what session to go to when they look at the titles. Uh, so think of a title that's really going to say what you're going to do, but also will encourage people to come along. The abstract, which is basically a fancy word for a couple of hundred words, no more than 200 words, so that's a maximum, uh, about what you're going to talk about. And it doesn't have to be 200. 100 would be fine. You should, within that, those words, uh, make it clear what presentation format you want to do. Is it the 20 minute presentation, five minute lightning, a workshop, a performance or a thematic panel? So make that very clear in the abstract. And I guess the key point I want to make, and I'll say a bit more about this, is that at an oral history conference, in your presentation or whatever you're doing, you have to be saying something about oral history that will be of interest to other oral historians. Um, basically, that's the one thing everybody at this event will have in common. So there's not a lot of point in you talking in great detail about the local history of your little area if you don't say anything about oral history, because really, that's not what people are coming for. Let me say a little bit more about that. And in a way, what I'm going to do here, these are the selection criteria that we used for the last conference and indeed for the one before. Uh, we haven't reviewed them for this conference, but they'll be pretty similar to this, I imagine give you a sense what we're looking for when we review the proposals. The first thing is one proposal per person. So don't put in five proposals hoping to get lucky uh, because we're going to be oversubscribed. So we can't do more than that. The only possibility is you might do a solo presentation, but also be a member of a group presentation. Um, again, if we're completely overwhelmed by presentations, we may strictly limit to one proposal per person. But at the moment, if you want to put in a solo one and then be part of a group, 
that's okay. We want to make it clear that we're in interested in all the different varieties and approaches to oral history, all equally acceptable community projects, professional, academic research, media work, performance work, libraries and archives, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so all those different things. Your proposal has to have a clear and substantial relevance to oral history. So make it clear that you're going to be talking about oral history in the proposal. So if, for example, your proposal entirely talks about written life stories, it may well get rejected or maybe marked as borderline for review. Uh, it's a conference of oral historians. So, you know, maybe you are talking about some reminiscence work you've done involving life writing, uh, but based on people's telling their stories and it's got you know, a lot of overlaps and, and value to oral historians. We'll make that clear if that's the case. But if it doesn't look like there's anything about oral history in your proposal, they're the ones that we tend to, especially when we're, you know, we've got a lot of proposals, they're the ones that we don't tend to accept. And then this is the key thing. The proposal should demonstrate that the presentation won't just focus on the empirical details uh, or the topic of a specific project, but will have something to say about an aspect of oral history practice or theory that's of wider interest to a general audience. So, for example, um, and I'm just trying to move things on my screen so I can see this. Um, say I was giving a, a, a paper, I wanted to give a paper about a project I'd done about British migrants arriving in Australia, and that's all I write about in the abstract. That's not enough because I need to show that I have something to say about oral history in the proposal. So I might want to talk about what from that project I learned about memory or about emotion or about the interview relationship or about the interview sample or why oral history is valuable for this topic or about how I might interpret the interviews or about the challenges of using those interviews to make histories in performance or a website or museums and so on. So if you get what I'm really trying to get at is we don't want to know about the empirical findings about a particular research topic or a particular local history project. We want you to talk about what other oral historians are going to be interested to learn about, the sort of things about oral history. And I've just got two examples here. Um, but actually, I, I couldn't access the, um, the easy chairs for the last conferences. So I've just grabbed a couple of proposals that myself and with Anissa, we put in the last couple of oral history conferences. So this is one uh, about making an oral history ebook, and you'll see right at the end I've highlighted in red the little bit about in the presentation we'll explain how we're making the book, showcase the, the online oral links, and discuss technical, methodological, and ethical issues posed by the ebook format, which is an ebook based on oral history. So we're highlighting how it's relevant to oral historians. Or well, here's another one, which is more about a topic-based research project about you know, fathers and families in the Great Depression, where I talked about using a particular oral history archive. And you'll see again in the red bit, I highlight that in this paper, I'm going to reflect upon, uh, I've lost, I can't see the word on my thing, using oral history archive interviews conducted by other people. And then I run through the range of sorts of issues about using archived interviews that I'm going to talk about. Okay. So finally, a few points. As I said, you can, if you've got any questions about using EasyChair and submitting your proposal, that's the email address. If you've got any questions about the format and content of your proposal, uh, what you want to talk about and how you want to talk about it or present it, then by all means, email me. I'm now happily retired from Monash. I've not necessarily got more time on my hands, but I'm very happy to do this. Uh, key thing, the deadline for proposals is the 1st of April in 2024. Uh, that will be a pretty hard deadline, I, I think, because that gives us plenty of time to review the papers, give people feedback, and then put the program together. And it's a long way away, so you've got plenty of time to do this, but try and do it sooner rather than later, otherwise we get deluged in the last week. Um, we'll aim to turn it around within a month or two and get back to you in June uh, um, about acceptance. Uh, it's usually acceptance. We we you know we're a pretty broad church. And we're pretty inclusive, and we try to include a wide range. And the the ones that get rejected are usually ones that have got nothing to do with oral history or are people who are you know chances who aren't actually interested in coming and are just trying to whatever. Now, sometimes it's very clear. Um, and occasionally we we think okay we want to go but get back to people and just say look you need to tweak your abstract because we can't really see how this is going to work at the conference so there there is that little bit of backwards and forwards once you get accepted you have to register for the conference and, and pay registration otherwise you won't be able to present 
um, and you'll be reminded to do that. Um, most of these state and territory associations provide uh, some conference bursaries for people who are going to struggle to pay to come along. Um, and the last point to make is that you will be encouraged, particularly uh, all those wonderful presentations at the conference uh, will be going around and, and tapping people on the shoulder and say, please, why don't you submit that to our journal, Studies in Oral History. Right.